In the efforts to prevent violence, the city has come to rely on the comfort and leadership from survivors. One example is the group Mothers for Justice and Equality. To talk about efforts planned over the summer is our guest from the group, the lead organizer, Sarah Flint. Thank you very much for being with us, Sarah. Thanks for inviting me. I want to start by asking you about some of these unfortunate events that we've been through. We had a 16-year-old mm -hmm. boy who was recently uh, fatally mm -hmm. shot. Uh, seven or eight year old girl recently hit by a mm -hmm. car and I guess your organization has been affected by that maybe trying to help people affected mm -hmm. by that. Yes exactly um, that's one of the reasons we were formed to um, empower mothers and women to deal with the violence in the community and losing our children and it's really unfortunate that you know losing any life but young is the little eight-year-old little girl and the um, 16 year old because I can really personally feel know the fact because my son was murdered he was 15 the young man that took his life was 17 and um, it's a matter of us really pulling together finding resources and um, actually fighting the issue of you know um, taking back our children in our in our streets for people who are in these situations, what's so important about being able to talk to another survivor? Because they are survivors themselves. Oh, yeah, exactly. That, that's what um, we um, realize, that survivors aren't just the ones that have um, buried their children. They're the ones that have lost to um, the penal system. Because we need to look at exactly what is causing these kids to act up. You know, what do they need? What do we need to do? To help them, you know, because there's um, a lot of situations where the mother may not know, you know, what, what's going on. And she may know, but is really afraid to act on it. Because, you know, as a, as a rule, as if you, you know, do anything that is not the norm with your child, they, you know, they're doing a 51A on you, you know. And then that, that scares parents to the fact that, you know, if I try to chastise my child, will they call um, um, DF, DFC? Call the authorities. The authorities. Get them in trouble, maybe, yeah. too. You have yeah. to be careful about that. <laughs> and, and, you know, will my child be taken away from me? And um, it's, it's a lot of things that really scare them because they have that um, change, child in need of services. You know, people don't realize by going and getting that help, you're giving the your child over to the state. The state has control of your child until they're 18 years old. Now, I, I don't think many parents are clueless or uncaring, but I can easily imagine a situation where you have a parent who's in a kind of state of denial that, that oh, yeah. she might think that her boy is mm -hmm. acting tough because that's what all boys do at a certain yeah, age. That's, and, and that's so, true. so you, you mm -hmm. don't want to take it too seriously. What would mm -hmm. you say to a parent who's in that um, I, I'd say that's a myth. You know, you're, you're, it's not, you can't ho close your eyes. You can't walk around blind because that causes a lot of our kids to get hurt. And then a lot of them think if you, you take that attitude that you don't care, they're going to do whatever they want. You know, and we as parents, we have to take a stand. We have to go back to the days in, uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s where we had more control of our kids. And you could tell that by the older ones. Like my kids are in their 40s now, you know, and I have grandkids in their 20s and late teens. But, you know, thank God I don't have issues with them. But I got six grandsons, and every day I worry about them, you know, and, and it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, um, it's a bad thing. And I know if I worry about mine, how many other mothers and fathers and grandmothers are worried about theirs. Are things different now? for kids, especially when it comes to the pressure to it's, get involved. I think it's much worse, you know, because the kids don't have nowhere to go. They close down all the centers. They take away um, programs that have been really effective, you know. So why, um, if, if it's not broke, why, you know, if it's broke, why fix it? Whichever way it goes. Right. But, you know, why would you have a program or service that has been very good for a long time? Then you, you take away the funding, next thing you know, the situation's out of control again. Then you say, oh, let's go back to that idea that we had 10 years ago. You know, so, but I, I personally feel things are much, much worse. But it's not as bad as 
the late 80s and 90s. But, you know, and also they say that, you know, the crime is going down and there's less shootings. I mean, uh, murders. Police yeah, less there's, murders, less, right. there's less murders. But you add those non non um, non fatal non, non you you're close to 300 you know and it's thank god for modern technology because if it wasn't for the medical service we get now it would be up in the 2 and 2 250 can you talk about something that, that that's ongoing that, that mothers for justice is doing for parents who are concerned about their kids and, and just don't know where to turn mm -hmm. for help well um we you know they could call our office me as um myself as the lead organizer i would work with them i even go as an um, advocate with them you know because sometimes it's always good not to be the only person in the room have somebody else with you and um, they, we have two, a program twice a year. It's called the You Matters. And we work with young women, um, late um, mothers, just women and, and grandmothers that want to work on like public speaking, civic engagement, how to um, look at where you were in your life, where you were, where you are, and where you want to be. You know, and that's an eight week program. We have two classes for those eight weeks. One in the morning, and um, for the mothers and women that aren't working, and then one at um, five o'clock in the evening. One of them's on Tuesdays, the other one's on Thursdays, and that's twice a week. We just had a graduation last well, last, last week, and that was um, ten, twenty women. So you figure, and this is our third class. So it's 24, six women, 60 women have graduated. We have what we call um, youth advocacy program. Every summer starts the beginning of July, ends the end of um, August, where we have youth that we train them about um, being responsible, job interviewing, civic engagement, community service. And we started with like 10. And this year, we're going to have 50 youth working with us. And you do have uh, some big event coming up December too. Right? Oh, we had it. It was Saturday. Saturday, we just missed it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's called. It was called the um, the um, um, Mothers of Courage Award, and we each year. This is our third year. We honor um, we honor fourteen uh, women, mothers and grandmothers that have came stepped up to the plate after losing their child or grandchild. And um, it was a wonderful event. It was at UMass Boston. And what we did is um, we got, they received the um, knowledge that, you know, it's appreciated what they're doing. And we're sorry for their loss. And Mothers for Justice is an organization where we all, we do, we, we love each other, we hug each other. And everybody knows what we're going through. Like myself, back in the 80s, there was no one I could talk to that understood what was going on in my life and in my kids' life, so I suppressed it, you know? So it's, it's really a matter of us telling our story because if you don't know the story, you don't know what's going on. And that's the only way to change the story, too. Mm -hmm. If people want to get in touch and get some help, what's the best way for them to do that? Okay, they could call us at 617-516-86, no, yeah, 8682 or 80. Eight, six. Thank you very much for being with us. Mm. Yes. Oh, and we're located at 164 Dudley Street, Roxbury. Thank you very much for that as well. Sarah <laughs> Flint from Mothers for Justice and Equality. Uh, we'll have more news in just uh, a moment.